In Vygotsky's sociocultural theory, the child and the social environment combine to mold cognitive development in culturally adaptive ways. According to Vygotsky, once children become capable of mental representation, especially through language, their ability to participate in social dialogues greatly expands. As adults and more knowledgeable peers interact with them while they work on challenging tasks, tasks within their zone of proximal development, children start to converse with themselves. Using this private speech, children guide and direct their own behaviors in much the same way they received assistance from others. Let's listen in as these first graders use private speech while working on a math problem. What features of dialogues with more mature partners promote private speech and transfer of cognitive processes to children? The term scaffolding has been used to describe the quality of this supportive interaction. The child is viewed as a building, actively constructing him or herself. The social environment is the necessary scaffold or support system that allows the child to build new competencies. Adults adjust the communication they provide to children's momentary competence, offering the necessary assistance for mastery while prompting children to take more responsibility for the task as their skill increases. Where's that one go? You find it this time. No. 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 Oh, that was close. Keep looking. No. 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 You keep missing that side. Yeah. Vygotsky believed that make-believe play did not just emerge spontaneously, but was yet another capacity socially transferred to children. Adults scaffold children's pretending and use of substitute objects. Here, two-and-a-half-year-old Sophie pretends with her father's assistance. She wants her mommy. Oh. <coughs> did she find her mom? No, she hasn't waked them up. Is that a, well, you could go and wake the mum up. Shall I wake the mum up? Here, mum. Here we are. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss. Kiss. Kiss, kiss. Hey, I think these animals are getting pretty tired, you know. Maybe we should cover them up and they could go to sleep. No, they won't live in their farm. Oh, right. You're chasing each other. They want to come out of the farm. Oh, yeah. Where do they, they want to go? They lost their friend. They lost their two friends. Oh, so they want to go and look for their friends, do they? The sheep jumped up. The sheep jumped up. The sheep jumped up. The sheep jumped up. And the horse jumped up. They both jumped up. They both jumped up like a boom boom. They both like up. Why are they jumping up? They want their friends. Oh, and they're jumping up. Where are their friends, do you think? Over here. They found their oh, friends. Oh, they found their friends. They were jumping over the fence to see their friends. They were jumping over the fence. She's gonna have a sleep with her. She's oh. gonna have a sleep. She's gonna have a sleep time, like, cause she's tired. Oh yeah. I think Ted's tired too. I'm gonna start a, a bed over here for other animals. A lollipop to hold her hand. A lollipop in her hand. 
We haven't got any lollipops, have we? Laura has. Has Laura got a lollipop? She's got all the dolls. And the table too. Maybe this could be a make out lollipop. That could be we'll make out that's a lollipop for the bear, shall we? That's a lollipop. So she can suck that while she's going off to sleep, do you think? Is that what she wants? It's a dummy. It's a dummy, you think? Okay. The dummy might help her get to sleep. It's a long dummy. Dummy. Leprechaun's looking pretty tired. What do you think? No, he wants a lollipop too. He wants a lollipop as well. What are we going to use for a lollipop for the leprechaun? So he's sharing. Oh, they'll share. All right. According to Vygotsky, cooperative learning, in which small groups of peers work toward common goals, is an excellent means of promoting cognitive development. Let's listen in as fourth graders work cooperatively on a complex math problem. I asked you to figure out how much money Mr. Pig found, how much money Mrs. Pig found, then how much money the piglets found, and then at times Mrs. Piglet and Mrs. Pig and the piglets found money together. And I asked you to figure that total, total and you did, and we came up with how much? $34.67. That's how much money we have. That's how much money the pig family has. Today I'm going to ask you to solve a different kind of problem. You still have the same amount of money, but this time we're going to the restaurant and we're not interested in the special. We want to order something else off of this menu because, boy, remember how good that menu looked yesterday? Yeah. Oh, you could get nacho chips with salsa for $1.50, or you could get black bean soup for $1.25 a cup. Or if you really like black bean soup, you could have gotten a bowl for $2.25. Well, today, you don't have to order the special. I'm going to have you work with a partner, and you can decide which meal or what each person, each pig, is going to eat. We need to remember, let's not do that now. We need to remember the number of people in the family and how many people are there. Show me with your fingers in the air. There should be there's five. Yeah, there's five. Because the, there are there's two, two piglets. piglets. Two piglets. Yeah. And the mom and the dad. That's oh. four. Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> it ended up being four. Okay, so remember there are four people. So when you're, or four piglets. Four piglets. Four pigs. <laughs> two pigs and two piglets, as Sophie pointed out to us. Your job with your partner is to look at the menu and decide what they could have to eat and not go over their total. Which is 
Picture. Then we went up to the desserts. Yeah, and we got the flare 